Few things are more satisfying than a good mountain picture. If you have beautiful mountains in the background and a fantastic foreground, you easily can create amazing compositions. But as usual, when they come out of the camera, they might not look as amazing as they could. So today we're going to take the shot I took in Tenerife recently. And we use Photoshop to really bring in some color, make the sky a bit more impressive and just overall enhance the photo, well, at least to my liking. <laughs> so let's use some really simple Photoshop tools and get it done. First of all, in this particular case, I took two exposures. One picture where you can see the sky very well and another one where you can see the foreground very well, as you can see. So what I want to do first, just to have the highest quality possible, is to combine them. So the easy way to do that, I'm just going to grab that layer flip it over to my other file and leave it. Now I use the move tool to make sure they are on top of each other. I did use a tripod so they should be pretty much aligned. Now I'm going to drop a layer mask. I'm going to hit Command or Control and I to invert the layer mask and therefore hide the layer. And now with the gradient tool, I'm going to make sure I only have that sort of bright layer at the bottom part of my photo so this guy is not affected. Maybe something like that. So if we turn that on and off, we can see now we have the beautiful bright version for the foreground. But still, we didn't lose any detail in the sky. Now, as usual, that's a fantastic starting point, but we need to clean up our photo a little bit. There are some things that I find rather distracting, right? So you have, especially in the bottom right here, you have random stuff like this, which doesn't need to be there. Also, this little droplet here, whatever that is, probably bird poo. So let's create a new layer by hitting Command on Control, Option, Shift and N for new. Hit J on the keyboard to get the spot heating brush tool. And now it's time to simply get rid of those things. Awesome, once we are done the foreground, which already, you know, is way less distracting as it was before, we can continue in the sky because there were some dust spots on the lens, the usual stuff that happens when you travel. Awesome, but once we have that, the image is now clean and we can start working. First off, we want to work on the basics a little bit. And yes, we could use rather complicated things like curves or whatever, but we don't have to for now. Let's go and create a star visible. So we're going to copy everything you can see onto a separate layer. And we do that as usual with a shortcut by hitting Command or Control, Option, Shift and E. Now we have a new layer. And with that, we can go to Filter and then down to Camera Raw Filter. So let's balance out our photo a little bit. We can do that easily by starting to bring down our highlights. And that will make your clouds pop automatically maybe do something like that. Next, we're going to bring up the shadows a little bit, maybe do something like this. And now we're going to bring up the whites in general. Maybe two here looks good. And then we're going to bring down our blacks uh, approximately to here. It doesn't look too bad. I think we can even go a little bit higher with the shadows, maybe something like that. We're going to bring that down later again. But for now, just to balance it out as a good starting point for colors and light. And talking about color, let's bring in a little bit of blue, just a little bit, not too much. And also add a little bit, always very careful with that, clarity. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's hit OK. And now we really have a great starting point to work on colors. You can see the clouds amazingly. You have a nice texture in the foreground. That's fantastic. So because I like to do things step by step, we could have stayed in the camera raw filter. But let's go back. We're going to hit uh, Command or Control and J to duplicate that layer that we have just created down here. And with that, we go back to filter and camera raw filter. Because now it's time to add some magenta to bring some evening colors into the game. And for that, you guessed it, we're going to simply use the turned tint turned slider. So let's bring that towards the right to maybe something like this. Looks good. And now we're going to go down to where are our color grading wheels right here. So I would like to have some more magenta basically in the sky, right? So that's a very bright part. So we can simply use that highlight wheel and move it a little bit towards the magenta. Now, of course, don't do that. That's kind of weird. But if we stay somewhat reasonable, just to really get a little bit of magenta into that sky, it'll look just fine. We can even actually go a little bit crazy, but then change the balance so that it's really just showing up in the brighter parts of our photo. Otherwise, the, cloud, the clouds are also going crazy, right? We don't want that. So let's turn it towards the left here. And now we can go a little bit more crazy because it's only going to be introduced in that bright part on the left side there. Now, of course, in your photo, you can go as crazy as you want or as natural as you want. But this is just a starting point anyway. But we will continue from there. So looks good. But also while we are here, we might as well go to our saturation for our yellows and oranges because we can definitely make that a bit more prominent, can we? It's in the foreground. You want to see it. So let's take those oranges and crank the saturation up a little bit. We can also increase the luminance of those. So it really starts to pop from the foreground a little bit better. There we go. So once we're happy, we're going to hit OK. And now we have introduced our color. Good. Now we have to adjust the lighting to fit the scene that we're trying to well remember or recreate. 
So the sky way too bright, right? So let's bring it down a bit. We're going to create a curve adjustment layer. And I don't want to darken the whole image, right? It's kind of weird. So let's drop that point somewhere here to make sure the darks stay where they are and then bring this part down. And just look at the sky. It's going to be nice dark. At this point, I'm not going to go too crazy just to bring up the clouds a little bit more. And I think we can even take those highlights and bring them down ever so slightly, maybe something like that. Now, of course, that kind of darkens everything, which is not really what I want to do. I just want to see that in the sky. So let's hit Command or Control and I on the keyboard to invert that effect or that layer mask better. And then use a gradient tool to just bring that over the sky, just like that. Awesome. As we can see now, we only affect our sky. It's a little bit darker, not too much, but it takes some of the attention away from just the sky, right? Of course, feel free in your photo to make any adjustment you want. If you want to make it a little bit darker because you feel that's a little bit better, go ahead. And especially once you have the mask in, you can, of course, then actually see what you're affecting and can go as dark or as bright as you like. But I think this, this looks good. Next step is to bring some dynamic in. I want to draw the viewer into the picture. And if you have been here quite often, it's always a vignette. It's just so easy, you know, especially for sunset scenes. So let's hit Command or Control, Option, Shift and E one more time to create a stamp visible, meaning we copy everything we see onto a new layer right here. With that, we're going to go back to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. If we want to do it this way, of course, we could also do it manually. But here, let's be lazy, right? Lazy is not always bad. So let's use that vignette slider and bring that in. Find a value that works for you. I also want to make sure I feather that, of course, otherwise it looks kind of weird. So let's see what we can do here. OK, something like this looks good. Let's hit the OK button. I do find it a little bit too dark in the corners, right? So let's hit a or let's hit, let's hit the layer mask. Let's create a layer mask and use a black brush with an opacity of around 20 percent just to ooh, that was a lot, maybe 10 percent just to get rid of the effect in these corners. So it doesn't look like I don't know, darkness is uh, coming from heavens. Of course, alternatively, if you want to make adjustments after the fact, you can simply use the opacity slider and adjust that to your liking if you feel like maybe you went a little bit overboard. Now, in our picture, most light comes from the back, right? So we need to make sure that the front is also somewhat dark, otherwise it looks really weird. So let's create another curve adjustment layer, just like so, and start to bring it down a little bit, maybe to here. We are affecting everything right now. We don't want that. So hit Command or Control and I to hide the effect. Grab your gradient tool and just bring that into the foreground to your liking, maybe to something like that. And now once we have that in, we can go even a bit darker, I feel like. Maybe like this. And I think we can even change our little slider to go higher. Yeah, I like that a bit more. Let's go back to the adjustment and bring it to a point we like. Now that, of course, also swallows our algae in the foreground. So with a black brush, I'm just going to try to tap the effect out every so uh, every so slightly, because why not? There we go. And now the image is a bit more calm, but you still have a lot of attention on that foreground algae. So at this point, because you never know how the editing evolves as you do it, I felt like it's a little bit flat, doesn't it? So I created another curve adjustment layer and you're going to hate me for that because I do that all the time. It's terrible. I know. And I'll just increase my sort of bright spots ever so slightly, uh, something like that, to simply get more light into our picture, right? If we feel like a particular spot in the sky is now too bright, we can, of course, fix that as well. And I know, yes, I do it all the time, jump back and forth, but that's just my way of editing. Haters going to hate. So I'm going to hit invert. And with a brush, I'm going to just tap that in ever so slightly to take some of the heat out of this area right here because it was very bright, right? OK, there we go. Yeah, now it's not burning anymore, but we overall gained some light. Next, I want to visually separate our algae in the foreground a little bit from the background right there. And of course, guess what? Today is day of curves. I'm just going to bring down the brightness there a little bit. So I'm going to create a curve, bring it down a little bit invert that and bring that into the image in this sort in this sort in this center part right here this way our algae stand out even more okay maybe we can bring it down a little bit maybe 250 yes subtle change but i want it to pop right and the last step to make things pop a little bit more is to create another stamp visible so copy everything onto a layer and then go to filter camera raw filter once again i told you simple tools all the way and here, I have the feeling it's a little bit too bluish magenta now. I'm going to just ever so slightly move it towards the uh, yellow parts. Temperature-wise and turn-wise, I'm going to bring it ever so slightly towards the green. It's going to balance the colors a little bit. And I want to have some more clarity, so I'll simply go to the clarity slider and crank that up to maybe something like here. 
And last, last, let's go down and take care of our algae. And that's something you have to figure out for yourself what you like, but I don't want them to be as colorful in your face kind of deal. So I'm just gonna bring down the saturation a little bit and also the lightness maybe a little bit. It's otherwise too much. And also the lightness, or actually maybe up a little bit. Hmm, I don't know, it also looks good. And together with the clarity, I think this looks actually really good. Now looking at it as it goes, I feel like there's a bit too much purple in the sky actually. <laughs> So let's go to adjustments and use a hue saturation layer. We're going to invert the layer mask on that one, hitting Command or Control and I on your keyboard. And now grab the gradient tool to bring that in. So the gradient sort of stops just here. So I don't mind the purple here, but I think it's too purplish on top right here. Then we're going to swap to the adjustment, head down to the magentas. I'm just going to decrease the saturation completely, but only to adjust which magentas I'm selecting. So I want to select approximately this area. Now I can go back and just bring them down a little bit and now play with the lightness to see if I want to make it a bit brighter, a bit darker and find the middle path to not having too much and having just enough. And I think this one works well. Yeah, we took out a lot of that color temperature on the sky. Awesome. And there we go. Within a couple of minutes and we haven't used anything crazy difficult. We didn't need to cut out anything or something like that. We went from this one right here to a much nicer colorful version of itself. Of course, in your edit, you can use less color, more color, less clarity, more clarity, whatever tickles your fancy. So now you have seen that Photoshop doesn't have to be difficult. There are easy tools to use that can make all the changes. Good luck in your own edits and I shall see you next time. Have a good one.